Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie. Uh, today we're going to do the Steel Western Side Saddle. Uh, this side saddle was invented by John Steele. He used to have a website and was selling them. I haven't seen it lately. I don't know what happened. Uh, but Sky Saddlery is still making these. Um, I, this is my favorite of the Western side saddles. It looks really comfortable and padded. Um, and it's the most modern of all the side saddles. Looks like it was totally rebuilt from scratch. So these pieces here are two three ounce tooling leather. This goes on the wrong side of the tooling leather. Um, this piece here, however, should go on the right side. Make sure you get your score lines, that's the dotted lines, and then cut this straight line. That should be cut all the way through. Remember, it's an asymmetrical saddle, so if you're going to sketch out for tooling, be sure that you reverse the asymmetrical pieces. Um, that would make it a right side facing side saddle. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the right side facing side saddle. It's just that it's not normal and the other pieces won't fit right. So be sure to keep that in mind for tooling. These steel pieces will start with the suede. So this is your lower cover like normal Western saddle. This is your seat cover. Um, again, these all go on the wrong side of the, of the suede of the material you're using. Um, so I like to use a chamois, a really thin, nice, luxurious chamois, but any suede will work. This is the Skyver piece. If you have really, really thin, like a vegetable tanned uh, goat, um, goat or vegetable tanned uh, lamb skin, you can use that instead of Skyver. Uh, but it needs to be thin, all right? This here, I use my yucky suede for the padding, so it's not going to be seen. You can use craft leather if you uh, craft felt if you want. Um, or uh, some other type of padding, but I'm going to use yucky suede for that. This here is not going to be seen. Again, it could be skyver or suede. I've got a thin yucky suede that I use, so it doesn't have to be skyver. Uh, aluminum, make sure you get the curve right so your leaping, so your fixed head will curve in the right way. Um, and then this is craft felt just for a filler. Again, it's padding. Now, in the book, and all of these pattern pieces come from my book, uh, which is Modern Side Saddles for the Model Horse Arena. It's available on my website. Printed books are available on Amazon. So this really should be Skyver, but you can also do, again, the goat or vegetable tanned uh, lambskin or calfskin, something thin. Uh, this suede here should match what you used for your seat, so I would use chamois. Uh, when it comes to the billets, you only need three billets, three billet keepers. So we're, we're only going to use three billets, three billet keepers. As for the cinches, now I have a full rear cinch. You could just use a balance strap. That's what I'm seeing now in the photos, that if there's a balance strap on site, this, that's only for uh, your pleasure classes, right? This is a pleasure saddle. Uh, pleasure saddle meaning um, arena. You could do it for trail, uh, but if you want to show that you have a balance strap, if you don't want to use the rear cinch, you can just use a strap and strap it around to the front. I'm going to go ahead and do the full cinch. And of course, you need one stirrup. All right, so I'm not going to show making the cinches uh, or the stirrups. I have those in other videos. Those are pretty common items for Western, um, but I will show you everything else. And I'll be back after the pieces are cut out. So let's start with some of the easy stuff. First of all, you have the pouch. So the pouch would probably roll over like this. And then you need some type of, you know, whatever here. Uh, front here, right? So you can use, if you want it to look like it's thicker, you can use a second one. And then that'll look like a thicker one. And then you'll have to do your edge coat. All right, so however thick you want to make it, and that's why there's several of those. I'm really just going to do the two. So we'll glue these two together, and then I'm going to glue that flap down. You do want to make sure that what you are using here is finished leather. So I'll make sure it's tooled. And it's best to have your edge coating done as well. Yeah, so I recommend the edge coat because it fills in the cracks. It's kind of like a glue. All right, 
and later on we're going to glue that to here but we're going to do it later on so we don't accidentally knock it off all right pretty simple this you've seen this on almost every western saddle we're going to find center This little detail is because these two pieces would be sewed together and um, and then this piece would cover that stitching. So we're just putting on the cover instead of actually doing the stitching. And that is just like any western saddle. Okay, on this here, we're going to glue this piece of suede right into this space right here. Now, you can glue the suede or you can glue the, um, the leather. But if you glue the suede, then you'll have it in the right place. I chose chamois. that line that's the first thing we need to do fold it right on that line and we take this glue it right there there should be a little um, a little bit more at the bottom there so So we're going to set that aside to dry. We're going to take these two pieces. So you have your seat form and then the cantle support piece. It's got to go like that. So that's a finished piece that does not that's not going to be not going to be seen. We want to make sure we match the points and the curve. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to glue this right here, see where it fits, flush up against the side here and in the front. Paper's coming off, so I'm just going to put a little glue there to put it back in place. And you can see, it, it should be off, okay, that's correct. Looks weird, but that's correct. Okay, now we're going to take this piece. We want to glue it. So it's like that. Okay. Make sure it's flush down here. And now we're going to glue all the way along this edge. And then we're going to glue this right in there. And the important part is up in this area.
just along the top edge. Just along the top edge. do this just a little bit at a time. There's no rush at all. Okay, now we're going to see that little indent there? We're going to force it right next to that one. another one got to do the same thing so. I don't know if you see how we do that let me get that as flush in there as possible. I want to do that one more time. All the way here to the end. So then we have this bowl. Just like that. Okay. Now this we want out, these we want out. We are going to take this piece and we're going to put it in this way. So you see how that, but you want to match the front. All right, so we're going to put this in here and matching it will go past on both of these, okay? And we're only gonna glue this area in here between the skives, the, between the um, scoring lines. Let's see, between the scoring lines. have that in place. We're going to go ahead and glue this. Down to this. Now we have this piece. 
And you could do this in either direction. It doesn't matter. It's not going to show. What we want to do is glue this. Down to that. And the important thing is that this sits right on there, all the way around. So, let's go ahead and glue these down to make sure that happens. I'm going to do a few at a time here, but take your time, pull them pull to get a snug fit. So see I'm pulling, pull, snug, pull. There you go. And then we got a couple more on the other side. And if you pull them snug, that'll get that piece right where it needs to be. And I'm taking my time on some of these sections because this is a complicated pattern and I don't want to go too fast. So pull. And that is basically your tree right there. Make sure that back support piece is underneath that finished um, candle piece. Well, it goes all the way around. We'll just call it candle. And as always, I trim away any excess. I think it helps uh, with the finished product not having lumps anywhere. Okay, now we're going to do this padding. It could be craft belt, it could be batting, it could be more suede if you want. Basically, we just need to boost up and kind of um, hide that rough edge a little bit. So I'm just going to put glue around the edge. I also need to put a little glue uh, right underneath that fixed pommel. Just to keep it in place. Um, craft felt doesn't um, always deal well with glue. It gets like stiff and we don't want it to get stiff. So that's why I'm just doing the edges. Well, I suppose you could get it stiff and it would stiffen the whole tree, but I made it this way, so we'll do it this way. And as always, I'm adjusting and I'm making sure it's where I want it to be. Now we're going to put on the seat cover. And um, like I said, that's where I should have put glue underneath the craft felt but uh, it'll still work so we're going to start right there because that's your anchor point if you get that right the rest of the suede should come together really well the rest of the seat and this way you don't have a ton of um, uh, glue you're dealing with now you're, here I'm just checking to make sure I got enough overhang all the way around because what we're going to do is we're going to do a double roll. I've tried doing this off the seat and it doesn't work nearly as well as doing it on the seat. Because when you do it on the seat, you're fitting it to the actual shape. So I have a little bit of glue and I'm just going to do a really small fold over. And because it's suede, of course, I'm kind of getting rid of the excess so I don't ruin my seat. So very small fold see that i'm not going to attach to the seat yet i'm just going to do a fold like that and we're going to do the fold all the way around and i want to make sure when i do the fold that i still have a hangover because that's what i'm going to glue it's going to be rolled under and then the actual roll will be glued to the seat so going slow is very helpful and um, people ask what kind of glue I use. This is Aliens Tacky Glue. I, I like it very much. I use it for a lot of things. I've found it works. Um, even on fabric, it'll work because I've been doing doll clothes lately. So 
by making sure that I got the right amount all the way around, then I don't fold too much. Yeah, there was a little wrinkle in the suede, so it wasn't all that cooperative. This is the hardest part of the pattern right here. This here, if you can get this done, the rest of the pattern is pretty much just cut together, cut and paste together. Um, this here is the thing that you're going to need to focus on the most and take as much time on as you need. So again, I'm going slow in this section because this is hard. And um, if I go fast, um, you might miss something. So. I'm only going to roll right to that edge there. If you see that, and now I'm going to go around and I'm going to go ahead and glue it right to the top edge. It's going to uh, go over the edge a little bit. And you'll see what I mean right here in a minute. So I'm not really going to cover that finished um, piece that goes around the base of that tree. What I'm going to do is See, I'm going to slightly pull it and then the rolled, see how you see the roll and you never see that inner edge of the chamois. And I can go back, you know, while the glue, it's again why I like Aileen's, while the glue is still setting up, I can, um, you know, play around with it and get it to look how I want it to look. See that? And I'll do that section and then I can move on to the next section. So keeping your glue fresh means you have more time to work with it. There's a lot of gel glues that set up way too fast. And this here gives me time to make sure I got it right. So a little bit of glue all the way around. And I'll show you again. So we're kind of putting the rolled part of the edge and tucking under um, the suede edge. And we're just doing it right on the very top lip so you can still see uh, the finished band underneath. You see that? If we get through this, then I can start speeding things up. But there you go. And I'll keep working with it if I need to until I, it looks even all the way around and that it's fully attached. See, I'm still working it. And that's important because it will be seen. Well, right there on the front edge, I want that to kind of disappear. Okay, that's going to be glued downwards. But that front edge... I'm going to glue this down. Pull it tight when you do. And you're going to glue it. You want, see how that, that split there that you cut? You want the um, suede to drop below that. That's really, anything over that is excess. Now on the front here, See how I should have put some glue right there for that piece of craft felt? So I'm doing it now. And I'm put that down. Work it in there really good. And then we have to do the front, the very front that has a little bit of a cutback. And there's different ways to do it. I'm going to do a slice. And I can't tell you where to put the slice until you put the seat on um, because it may be different every time. So you don't want to cut all the way to the cutback. You want to give um, you know, a little bit of extra to cover the very front edge of that cutback. It won't really be seen uh, because you have the safe is going to come over that, but it shouldn't, uh, it really shouldn't be seen. All right, put that in. Really want that to be in there smooth. 
I think I fix it later to make sure that it does. And then push that other piece in and down. And you can see how the front is totally covered. You can't see the craft felt. You can't see the green. That's good. Now, that there, I'm going to use a stylus and I'm pushing the edge in, pushing it down so that you can't see it. it it's supposed to be sewn in on the real saddle, so we just need it to glue so it is. Now I'm kind of shaping the seat a little bit, just a little bit. It's not a, a stiff saddle tree pattern. Um, and uh, any place like here, I don't often do this, but I want to get it right in that corner where I found there's a gap. So I'm, I'm using this stylus to put glue right in there because I wasn't happy with the way that was laid down. And then the other side of this stylus is how I can push it in. There we go. That's better. And again, working with suede, you want to get the glue off as soon as possible, any excess, so you don't smear it all over the place. There. Now I like it. It's looking much better. And the seat is a big part of the saddle, so you want to make sure you get that right. Okay, moving on to the jump head. Um, now this would be adjustable on a real saddle. We're going to make it fixed. It's just easier. If you wanted to make it, you know, adjustable, you'd have to put a pin in and it's, I think I have instructions for that in the book. I'll have to go check and see. Uh, but for us, um, we're not really worried about the rider. So we're going to make it fixed. Now we're going to take the bigger suede and put that on the, um, the padding that we just glued on. And we're going to make sure that we can fold it over so it's kind of centered. Um, and the fold should be towards the front of the saddle. So, I mean, if you do it right, you're not going to see a seam. And that's why chamois really good for this. Uh, but some leathers are, are a little more difficult. So just keep in mind, you want um, the front of the saddle should not have the seam. It shouldn't it should point towards the rear of the saddle the seam. So we're really going to glue this to the edge of the jump head, just to the edge. And that's what's so unique about this saddle is these heads have swayed all the way around where your leg is going to be, so they look way more comfortable than some of the others where you have a seam. Um, Looks like a woman had input on this saddle. So now we're going to fold that over and we're going to try and match the edges. So sometimes you'll have a little bit of overage and that's because suede is leather and it stretches. It's very important to get that tip get everything glued together so it looks like it's been sewn. Looks like we didn't have any overage or extra. Okay, so that was glued, or it's going to be glued right on top of where that seam, the seam side, okay? And I was just doing a dry fit there. So, and we're again, everything's in stages, so the glue has a chance to set up so that you don't have to redo everything. So we're going to put that right on top. It should be back just a little bit, so you should kind of see sh the suede all the way around the edge. And um, just because I'm still going to be working this, I'm not done with the piece, I'm going to go ahead and put a, um, a clamp there. All right, now just checking to make sure it's centered properly. Next thing we need to do 
just glue down those two straps. You can do both at the same time. No, they are a little long here. My suede wasn't that thick. So I'll cut that so that it's right in the center. That way I have the seam in the center. Of course, I clip the extra, and that way the two sides look like they match perfectly. Okay, still working with the leaping head. That is the leaping head jockey flap. There's a slit for the pattern that you should have cut in, and that's where you're going to put your leaping head. So tuck it in there nice and tight. You want to go ahead and bend that aluminum to a 90 degree angle. And then checking the front to make sure it's pulled tight enough because I don't want to see any aluminum. And then we'll go ahead and glue down that piece of aluminum in the back. And this is why it's helpful to have the paper on. For whatever reason, the paper on the aluminum, if it sticks, um, is good to have just to kind of like hold it. It's not going to be critical, but it's helpful. And then I'll go ahead and put a little bit of glue right in there. And that's just to kind of help hold it from the front. So just on the leather, right in there. And I'll go ahead and push that and hold that for a few seconds so the glue can set up a bit. All right, now we're gonna start assembling the saddle. Yes, we're almost done. You need to make sure this piece it's the only symmetrical piece on the entire saddle make sure that is going to be along that, that um, decorative piece is along the center line of the saddle so we're going to put a little bit of glue on that uh, back piece which its sole purpose was to hold these uh, rear jockeys in place and make sure it's centered and you can double check it with a ruler, or in this case, I use my stylus. Um, as centered as possible, nothing's ever perfect, but centered is good. Then we're going to take the safe piece. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's called a safe. And along the curves, the straight and then curve right there, that's what we're going to glue first. So we want to, yeah, this, this can be tricky but you want it to go, see how it's actually on the rear jockeys. So yeah, like that. And you want it nice and snug right against the, um, the fixed head. And you might have to do some working on it depending upon what your suede is like, because sometimes the suede can be an issue. Now it's not quite straight yet, so um, I'm kind of let that sit for a bit. And now I'm going to force it straight, which is putting in that third dimension. Um, so we're going to go ahead and glue right there. And we want to pull it and then force it down straight, if that makes sense, because right now at the the safe is trying to push out towards the front and we want it to push downward. So I'm making it straight with the jockey edge. So the edge of the jockey piece and the edge of the safe flat should be um, parallel. Okay, so now we can go ahead and um, I have kittens coming to see what I'm doing. That's Chester. He's, he's a handful. He's such a cutie, though. So we're just going to go ahead and glue that right like that. 
You could glue all the way around, but you don't have to. If you glue right there, it'll stay in place. Okay, so now we're going to get our other uh, head skirt. This is the leaping head skirt uh, flap. And we're going to go ahead and just really glue the top to begin with. There will be a pin to help it stay in place. Um, see, the glue let go, so I'm just going to glue that aluminum to the piece of paper. Now we're going to just do the head right there, and the, it should go right on that seam. Remember, we created a seam. I want it to go right on that seam. So I'm going to see suede all the way around, and it would be more comfortable to have suede where you don't accidentally put your knee on a seam. So I swear a woman had input on the design of the saddle. All right. Now, there's a couple other places that we, we can glue. You need to glue down that little tab right onto the seat. This you can only use glue because the woman's leg is going to be there. You can't have any metal. It would be very uncomfortable. So this is glued down. We also want to glue that tab. That tab is going to have a pin. And there's, uh, another, there's regular pins on it just like a, a regular western saddle. So we'll go ahead and glue that down and that down. Just hold it for a few seconds so the glue can set up. And you can clamp it if you want. I don't leave them on for very long because I don't want them to leave clamp marks. All right. Now we're ready for the other side. And you'll begin to see why, you know, all these little pieces on the tree are where they are. Most of it is to support all these flaps. Okay, now we're going to do this last flap. And uh, you can see, I'll go ahead and glue just along the edge because we're going to pin it in place. Right now, we just want it where we want it so that when we pin it for the final stability, um, it will already be there and we're not going to have to fight it. So. Push down that rear jaw key and you're going to tuck it right in there. Get that in there nice and tight in the front. And then all the way around that curve. Like that. That's why there's a little bit of overage on that, that one support piece so that you can glue things like this down. Okay, so nice. And because it's on that round, it's resisting, so I have to hold the pressure until the glue sets up. And there we go. Now we do the pins. Okay, now we need a stirrup bar. So for this, I'm gonna take I believe this is a six millimeter jump ring because I have a quarter inch strap on the um, jockey. So I made it into a D by squeezing it flat on where the opening is. And then there is this little piece in the pattern you can use for the jump ring, um, but it's just um, quarter inch laced. Doesn't even have to be pretty. So let's go ahead and fold that over to make a D strap. And then what we want to do is see that hole that we made. You want it just behind that. You don't want it sticking in there. You want it behind there. Okay. And this piece is too long. It's fine. We can trim it. Um, we'll go ahead and Place that down right like that. See, it's just touching the flat part of that hole. And um, you don't really want to glue down where the fold over is because you do want some flexibility there. And here I'm going to go ahead and cut out the excess so I don't have bulk in there. Don't really want bulk in there. And this is the best time to add your uh, stirrup leather. 
it's going to be the easiest. So you're going to put it through the hole, through the jump ring, and then back through the hole like that. Now I made my stirrup leathers adjustable. If you don't want adjustable, you could just go ahead and glue that flap down. And um, I, I never put a rider on this doll, so I made it so that the stirrup leathers, the bottom of the stirrup, hits about the bottom of uh, where the belly of the horse starts. Which is kind of like a rule in the model horse arena if you don't have a rider. Um, a rider would definitely change that position. So here's where we're going to do our concho beads. I'm using simple flat ones. I'm going to add some silver to it later. Um, some silver plates I made. And uh, so we've got six of those. We don't have the uh, two pieces, the one for the Latigo tire, the cinch keeper on this saddle. They don't exist on this saddle. It would ugly it up, so he didn't add it. Okay. Now, I'm finding center because I'm going to go ahead and glue this into place. And I'm doing it suede side down. So finished leather to the underside. Notice how this tucks in neatly. You do not see it. Okay, it hides. All right, now I always do my center pins first. First one goes on that tab right there. If you hold the pin near the, the point and push in, you're less likely to bend it. So hold it towards the point. That didn't go in all that straight, but it'll still work. Because the saddle's starting to take that third dimension shape. Once we put those skirts on, it still needs training. It's not fully at that third dimension yet. Okay, and then the other one's going to go in the corner of that side flap. And again, push from the uh, tip, the, the sharp point, and we'll pull it through. This should pretty much secure. Um, front to back, side to side for the other pins. And I always do the double bend. So pull it up real tight, do the bend, and we'll do one more bend. Really hard for it to work loose when you do the double. And um, then we're going to go ahead and snip away the uh, sharp points. More pins to go. So push that in like that, and right where my thumbnail is, is where that goes. Sorry, I did not get a good piece of video of that. I actually, now the other side, and you're gonna want it at the end of the seat. So right there. You can kind of see where that pin is. It's right in that crease before the safe. But this one here, we don't want it up top. We want it down like the front of the seat. You could put it a little bit further back, but that's the general area. There's not a lot to get into there. So if you go further up, you don't really have that bottom layer. And you're trying to get all these layers to hold together. So... Now we're going to do the back two. Now, I usually have, um, I pre-make my holes symmetrically per the pattern, and I'm looking to see if I did that, and it looks like I forgot to do it. So now I'm going to have to eyeball these to look symmetrical, because this pattern is, um, I call it simple elegance, and uh, it's a stamped pattern, and then I have that antiquing finish on it. and um, So there's, it's kind of chaos, but organized chaos. So I'm trying to estimate. It's so much better to have the pre-punched holes. So I'm too far over. 
I'm going to move it. And I have a cat visiting me again because they're curious about what I'm doing. There we go. So just double checking. Now's the time to move them if I have to. All right, so we'll go ahead and get those bent and clipped. Now that's all six of the pins. So yeah, part of the problem with that antique finish, I didn't put a finish coat over it, so it's kind of coming off and making things dirty, and that's not good. So these are for your breast collar. These are your breast collar rings. Um, I find that uh, having the suede help hold them down um, is helpful, which is why I do it this way. They're totally unseen. And just do it at the corners of your bottom uh, flap. And now we're going to get around these billet holes and put lay down the glue, and we're going to put that suede backing on. So this is very much like a regular Western saddle. Nothing new here. And there you go. And like always, I do one side at a time. So I get that to fit around those holes. The chamois can be stretched. So be very careful not to stretch it. Push it inward instead of pulling it outward. I find that helpful. And other side, all ready for it with the glue. And then again, we want to make sure we get it around that billet hole and on the edges. And really careful not to stretch it. Different suedes behave differently. That's uh, learning how to deal with that is just part of tack making. So what have we got left to do? Well, we have the little pouch. So that little pouch can go anywhere on that off side, on the uh, right side. Um, usually it's up a little bit so she can reach it. Um, you can put silver decoration in that corner there, so you don't want it too close to that corner. You won't be able to put the silver on. There we go. So I put the billet straps on. You know how to put billet straps on. Um, there's my front and rear cinch. There's my saddle pad. There's the cinches on. And then this one here, it tacks up where you have both your front and your rear are going to attach to that billet. So you put the front one on into, um, and you buckle it, and then the rear one goes in the next hole down. So they both buckle to that same billet. Um, this is how I saw this saddle done, uh, rigged up many years ago when I wrote the book. I can't find any pictures of it anymore because, you know, John Steele isn't around. So here we go. Now we have a bridle, a breast collar. Um, it's in training. That's what that rubber band is. Um, but I've added all my silver to my, you know, blanket to the saddle itself. It's a difficult pattern, but it's one of my favorites. Thank you for spending time with me today. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends about the channel, and you have yourself a really good day.